Okay, so Kalkadosh, we're going to continue. We are right now on Kavav Amud Aleph 26a1. So it says over here as follows. Yesterday we finished off by saying that there was going to be two different reasons, right, why we made a gizra to do with the sori. Okay, one of them was Reho was Nodef, which means it had a very good smell. So there's a gizra, maybe you're going to take away from this uh, sori and then by taking away oil and using it for a good smell, it's going to be considered mechabe, that you're turning it off. And then Abaye came and he told Rava, one second, I thought it was because it's going to blacken the walls and it could cause a fire. So the Gemara answered, Chada ve'od kamer, which means, you're right, it's both. It's one and another one. Number one, because it's af, which means that it could cause a fire. And number two, it's gizera shemistapek mimenu, maybe you're going to take away from it, because it's got a good smell, and by taking away from it, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to be over on mechabe, on turning it off, okay? So it says now the Gemara, Right, this never happens, but just in case it would, there was a chamot, there was a mother-in-law, that she was very, very hated by her daughter-in-law. Okay, so you had, imagine, the daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, so you had the, 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 the she hated her mother-in-law. Okay, so what happened? Amrala, she told her, So, um, what happened was, she hated the daughter-in-law so much, that she went and she told her, go put on, Shemina Farsimon, which is basically oil of persimmon oil. So go, you know, put yourself, bathe yourself in personal, personal oil. Azai Kashit, so she did that. So when she came back, she told her, Zil itli shaga, go, go light a candle. Azla atla shaga, she went, she lit the candle. The inpach banur khalta. What happened was, is that basically the fire got on her and she completely consumed her. So the mother in law got rid of her very easily. Yeah, very simple. Okay, so that's, uh, by the way, you should know, the Inyana Diyoma, you should be very, very careful, because apparently they said that the exact same thing happened now with um, all the majority of people are using all these types of things, the Purel and everything, and since it's got alcohol, somebody went, and after using that, they went and they were dealing with things of the fire, and their entire hand caught on fire. So also be very, very careful about that as well. Okay? We don't have Shemina Afar Simon anymore, or, or I don't think so but we still have all these other things as well. So just to be careful. Okay? Fine. The Gemara is going to now speak about, if we already brought down about Shemina Far Simon, we're going to speak about Shemina Far Simon. By the way, the previous thing, don't try it at home. Okay? Or tell your mothers, don't try it at home. It says like this, Umigdalot. What does it mean over here? Umigdalot ha'aret sishin nevuzaradan rav tabachim lechramim yogvim. What does that mean? The Navi uh, is coming and writing on that they weren't uh, exiled, right, to Bavel after the destruction of Bet HaMikdash. So the Aniyeh Ha'aretz, he left, Nebuzaradan Rav Tabachim, he left them for the Kramim and for Yagvin. What does that mean? The Kormim, Tani Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef comes and he says, Elu Melakte Farsamon. These are the people that used to collect the Farsamons, right, which is Me'en Gedi Ve'adrim Ramata, from En Gedi till Ramata. Yogvin, who are the Yogvin? These are the people that they catch the chilazon. Okay, remember the chilazon was for the dye that they used to use for the tzitziot. Okay, so it says over here, means Sulamot, from the place of Sulamot, shel tzor until Haifa. Okay, so those are two different types of people that he didn't exile them, he actually left them in Eretz Yisrael, he didn't exile them to Babel. So Tana Rabbana, we are going to learn in a bright time, em malikin betevel tame bechol, ven tzrich lomar beshabbat. You're not allowed to light with tevel. Tevel means untied, without taking off the tumot masrot during the weekday. You for sure don't have on Shabbat. You're not allowed to use the petroleum, right, like a gas, right, on white gas on during the weekday. And for sure you don't have to mention that on Shabbat. Okay? So he comes here now and he says... As follows, okay. It says like this: Bishlema neft lavan. I understand neft lavan af because it's like tzori, which means that it's gonna fly and it can actually burn the walls. Aval tevel tame my tama, but why not tevel tame? Which means petroleum is gas. Gas catches fire; it could catch everything on fire. That's you have a problem. But what about tevel tameh? Why is it that if you have untied food that became tameh, why can't, why can't you use this? So it says the Gemara, it says in the Pasuk, 
I'm going to give you my Mishmenet Trumotai. Again, Trumotai is written in plural. So yesterday we learned about Truma, you remember? So it says, Shemishet Trumot Akdum Edaben. That there are two Trumot that the Torah is talking about. One of them is Truma Teorah, and one of them is Truma Tmea. Ma Truma Teorah, just like Truma Teorah, En Lechaba Ela Mishat Rama Ve'elach, the Kohen doesn't have any Zechuyot on the Truma until they actually come and they give it to him, which means they, they actually separated it to him and they give it to him. Right? However, though, beforehand, it's considered tevel, and anybody that eats it is going to be chayav mitav b'deh shamayim. Remember, tevel, uh, the, so to do the truma is tevel b'deh is mitav b'deh shamayim, to do the kochim, it's karet. Af trumat mea, so to trumat mea, right, which means you're allowed to benefit from the burning. You remember that's what we learned from this pasuk. En lechaba el amishat ramav elach. You're only allowed to burn it. You're only allowed to have benefit from the burning when they separated it, which means before separating it, you're not allowed to benefit from it. So from this same pasuk that teaches you, you're allowed to use shemen truma in order to come and in order to benefit from this uh, truma. You're allowed to burn it and actually use this oil. You're allowed to use it for something. That same pasuk is teaching you that it only has to be after they separated it. Before they separated it, even though it's like it became tame everything, still it wasn't separated, so you're not allowed to benefit from it. Okay? Next, gufa. Right, we're going to go back to what we spoke about before. Rishimomu Lazar, Omer, Rishimomu Lazar says, Ema Leki Botsuri, you're not allowed to use this Tsari. Okay? I, you guys translate it as balsam, no, in English? Yes. Yes, balsam. Okay, balsam. So it says, Yivichena Yare Rishimomu Lazar, Omer, so too Rishimomu Lazar said, Tsari enon asiraf meatea ketaf. So what we read in the Korbanot, right, in the Ketoret. So in the Ketoret it's written that Tsari... Okay, which we think is the same thing, which is balsam. It's only going to be the tziraf from the atzea kitaf, which means here it says that there's an extra reasoning why you're not allowed to use the tzori on Shabbat, because the tzori does not come out from the fruits, and therefore it doesn't have the rules of all the oils, right, which come out from the fruits, which are moshech with the ptila, which draw from the wicks, but rather it's tziraf, which comes from the etzim, so it's compared to the zefet. It's like compared to tar, right? Which we learned above that it's pasul because it doesn't grab the ptila. So according to Rav Shimon Lazar, he's adding in now a third reason. The first reason was is because it 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 jumps to the walls and it could catch fire. Second reason was because it has such a, pre- a pleasant fragrance. You might take away from it to, to use it, you know, in the washrooms and other places, and then you have a problem because then you were just mechaber on Shabbat. A third reason, it's not moshech the ptila properly. So, which means that the, the wicks does not, Moshech does not grab the oil properly of this falsum, and therefore you're not allowed to use it. Okay, so Rishmael Omer, anything that comes from the tree, you're not allowed to be Malik in it. So, therefore, since it comes from the Sraf Me'atzekataf, it's coming from the tree, and therefore it's going to become prohibited. Rabbi Ishmael ben Broka Omer, Rabbi Ishmael ben Broka says, Em Malikina Leviotse Mina Pri. You're only allowed to light from things which come from the peri, that comes from fruits, which comes to exclude, for example, shemen dagim, right? Taba minachai. So it comes to exclude any types of oils that come from the fish, because obviously it comes from the fish, it doesn't come from the fruits. Or it comes to exclude also the itran, which is the, the, the leftovers from the tar, right? The, the remnants of the tar. Or tsori, which we just said that comes from the tree, this balsam. Rabbi Tafon Omer, Rabbi Tafon says, you're only going to light with Shemen Zayit. So Ahmad Rabbi Yochanan, so Rabbi Yochanan comes, right, and he says, right, he comes and he says the following. Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan Menuri, Ahmad al he stood up on his feet, and he said, He says, listen, very, very simple. It's very nice that you're going to come and you're going to say, that, listen, you have to use Shemen Zayit. But what about in different places in the world that they don't have a shemen zayit? What are you going to do in, for example, here on Sheba Vel, that they only have shemen shum shemen, sunflower seed oil? What are you going to do? Okay? So says the Gemara, what are you going to do? He says, very simple. Umaya suan shema dai. And what are you going to do in Madai, right, which is parts of Persia, right? Shelem el shem no guzim. They only have walnut oil. Umaya suan shema zayit. What are you going to do in Egypt, right? That they only have shemen sinonot. Umaya suan, what are they going to do on Sheka Potkaya? That they only have, they only have neft. So what are you going to do? Rather, they said, no, you only have what the rabbis told you. Right? That whatever they said that you're not allowed to light, you're not allowed to light. But you are allowed to light in with the remnants of the tar and also with Shemendagim, 
the fats of the fish. So Shimon Shizuri Omer, Malikim Hashem Pakot Mneft. Right, that you're going to be allowed to light with Shemin Pakot Mneft. What is this? You explained above. Okay, Neft, we said with petroleum. What was Shemin Pakot? He said, you explained above. Kavdala de Mubet Teara 16. Ah, it's a tzemach. He just says it's like a plant from the mishpachat dluim. It's like a type of like a vartiach, of like a watermelon type of a thing. The cucumber is like something like that. Okay. So it says you are allowed to light from shemen pakuot of neft. You're not allowed to light anything that comes from the meat, but you are allowed to come and light from shemen dagim. Okay. So says the Gemara. One second. Sumchus, which is the last opinion, that he said anything that comes from the batsar, you cannot do it, but you could use shemen dagim. That's the Tanakama. The Tanakama also said that you could use Shemin Dagim, right? That was the first thing that we learned. The first thing that we learned was, right, is that you are allowed to learn from Shemin Dagim. So he says, Ikebenayu, the difference between the Tanakama, right, and what he said was, is the Rav Bruna Amarav, the Rav Bruna Amarav, by Velo Mesayme, but he didn't finish it off, which means, Rav Runa Amarav came and he spoke about what happens if you remember when he spoke about the chelev, which is meutach, the fats, the primitive fats, which was um, melted, or the kirbe dagim shenimochu, we're talking about the intestines of the fish, which were crushed, right, which were made very, very soft. So it says, but they didn't finish it off. So because of that, that's why we don't know who was the one that said what, but that's the nafkamina between sumchus and the tanakama. Okay, next. Tanya, we learned in a brayta. Shimon Lazar and Shimon Lazar says, it's anything that comes out of the trees. For example, canvas, or semi-geffen, or types of uh, cotton wool. Embo mishum shalosh al shalosh. They do not make, right? They don't make from it a bud, which is types of material, which has three by three fingers. Okay, why? Because that's a shiru katana of called what's called a beged. And therefore, it's not mekabel tumah. Okay, so that means all these things, it's not mekabel tumah. Okay, anything that comes out of the tree. Right? And that's, by the way, even until today, the same alachot apply. For example, tissues and all these things which usually come from trees, they don't make clothing out of it, which are three by three fingers, and therefore, there's no problem of Tumah. So it says here, you're allowed to use it as Chach Kashen, except for Pishtan, except for flax. So flax, you cannot use it. Um, it's, uh, it is Mekabel Tumah, but it's not going to be used for Chach. Okay, so therefore, again, it's Mekabel Tumah, but they do make clothing out of it, out of it, okay? But it's not going to be used for the Chach. Amar Abaye, Abaye comes and he says, we're right now on Kavav Amubet. Okay, Abaye comes and he says, Rabbi Shimon and Lazar, the Tanat of Rabbi Shmael, Amru Dabar Echad. Rabbi Shimon and Lazar and Tanat of Rabbi Shmael, they all, they both said the same thing. Rabbi Shimon and Lazar was that which we just said right now. Tanat of Rabbi Shmael, Mayhi, what is the Tanat of Rabbi Shmael? The Tanat of Rabbi Shmael, but the Tanat of Rabbi Shmael says, Hol ve'memru begadim ba Torah stam. Since it was written in the Torah, begadim, stam, without anything, okay, without telling you which type of begadim, by one of them, by Negat Sarat, it did say, It did mention and explicitly tell you what is the Beged made out of, whether it's wool or linen. Malehalan, just like a Beged is dafka, always from wool and linen, so too the, 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 the Beged, which is written in the Torah, is always going to be wool and linen. So therefore, not only in Sarat, to do with any type of a tumult. So it comes out that there's a Binyan Av of Tanah Devi Ishmael, where's the Mekor that eats, that anything that comes out of wood does not become uh, susceptible for Tumah other than Pishtan, which is Pishtim. Why? Because the wool and linen, linen is the only one. Other than that, there's nothing else. So Rava comes and he says, nothing to do with it. He says, why? Rava Amar, Shelosha al Shelosha Yishar Begadim Ika Benayim. Remember, beforehand we said, Shalosh al Shalosh, Kimel al Gimel. There, since it's Shalosh al Shalosh, so it's Shalosh Etzbaot. Okay, however, though, because that's in female, shalosh is female, right? Echad shtayim, right? Shalosh, arba, right? That's in female. In male, it's echad shtayim shlosha, arba'a. You add the hay, which is usually the opposite in Lashon HaKodesh. Usually with the hay at the end, it's female. Here, it's male to do with the numbers. So now, what happens here is whenever you say shlosha, al shlosha, it's male. So since it's male, you don't, it's not an etzba, because you say... It's an etzba yetera. It's an extra finger. 
So you always use female. And etzbao, it's baot, right? It's female. So therefore, shalosh etzbaot. When you're talking about a male, it's shlosha tfachim. So whenever you say shlosha, it means tfachim. So here he says, Rava comes and he says, we're not going by three by three etzbaot, which is nothing. How much is an etzba? Etzba is two centimeters. You know, so this is an etzba. So this is two centimeters. So shalosh shalosh is six centimeters by six, six, six centimeters squared. I mean, it's basically it's six centimeters squared. Okay, here we're talking about three tfachim by three tfachim. Every tefach is eight centimeters. So three by three is 24 centimeters squared. There's a huge difference between six centimeters squared and 24 centimeters squared. It's times three. You understand? So it says over here, Rava comes and he says, Shlosha al shlosha beshar begadim. Really, by three by three is by other clothing. Ike benayu. The Shimon ben Azar alitle. The Shimon ben Azar says that if it has three by three tfachim, it is mekabel tuma. Right, because we only said three by three, uh, we don't say the concept of three by three tzbaot, but rather it's by the tfachim, right? Because by tfachim it's fitting even for rich people, okay? But according to the Rav Shmuel, he does not hold that it's going to be mekabel tuma because he said that any clothing which is not like begad of pishtim, tzemen of pishtim, sorry, which is wool and linen, does not have these attributes, okay? The chule al mamiyat, however, though according to everybody, shalosh al shalosh betzemen of pishtim etame, right? Benegia. So, however, though, according to everybody, though, it doesn't matter which opinion, if it's three by three, we're talking about fingers, right? We're talking about shalosh al-tzbaot or shalosh So it's going to be six centimeters squared. We said it's going to be mekabel tum'ah benegayim, to do with any type of nega tzarat. Minalan, how do we know this? So it says, the Gemara, the Tanya was learned in Hebraica. Beged. What does it mean, beged? En liela, beged, I only know that it's going to be a beged shalem, which means a full clothing of tzernu pishtim. However, though, what happens if it's not a full clothing? It's only a piece of uh, material. It's going to be shalosh al shalosh minayin. How do we know that even by three by three, it's also going to be metamet tumat tzara'at, tamulomar, veha beged. The extra vav and hey on veha beged, instead of just saying beged tzernu pishtim, a clothing that is made out of wool and linen, it says veha beged, and the clothing. So what is that coming to include? That even a beged katan, Right, that has three by three fingers is going to be tameh with tzara'at. Okay, so even if it's going to be three by three fingers. Okay, so says the Gemara, the ima lerabot shlosha shlosha. Why don't I come in and just say that it's going to come in to include three by three tfachim, not three by three fingers. Maybe the habeged comes to include three by three tfachim, not by three by three fingers. So how do you know that even it's going to be on a smaller shield of three by three fingers? So says the Gemara, lav kalvachomeni. Is it not considered a kavachomer? Hashta sheti ver mitameh shloshal right shloshal shloshal mibay. He says, I don't understand you. By the tuma of tzarat, even when you have strings of sheti ve'erev, remember sheti ve'erev is basically the right the sheti and then the erev. Sheti ve'erev is a cross also. That's what we call sheti ve'erev, right? The horizontal and the vertical. When we're talking about the horizontal and vertical lines coming together, whether it's going to be fitting also for poor people and also for rich people, so it's called the beged. So if it's going to be more than a shiur katan of three by three, it's already enough. So therefore, how do we know that it's going to be enough? So it says it's kavachomen. Just like sheti ve'erev, before they come and you actually put them together, it's still going to be mitame three by three, that you already did put the sheti ve'erev together, right? And it's got three centimeters, uh, three by uh, three finger breaths by three finger breaths. Isn't that already enough? So says the Gemara, yach, if so, shalosh al shalosh nami letu be'kavachomen. So also make a shalosh al shalosh by kavachomen also. Right? Why? You're going to say the same thing, from, right? From the Kavachomer of the Sheti Verev. So it says, no, 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 no. Shloshan Shlosha is fitting whether to the rich people or to the poor people. And if you have a cloth which is 24 centimeters square, that's fitting to use by even rich people. So since it's fitting for everybody, whether it's poor or rich people, that's why it's going to be okay. However, though, right? So and therefore you could bring it from a Kavachomer. But Shloshan Shlosh, when it's three, three uh, by three, three fingers by three fingers, which is basically the six centimeters square, he says it's only fitting for aninim. Ashirim, it's not fitting for ashirim. And therefore, it's not going to come in a kavachomen. That's what he's just trying to bring down. Okay? Fine. So it says the Gemara, Ta'ama dikhti dekat vekra. That's only because the Pasuk actually came and said that. Okay, halo kat vekra. But if it wasn't written in the Pasuk, lo gavnirim a kavachomen, you're going to tell me that you're not going to learn it from a kavachomen. Right? That means what? If it wasn't from that, you wouldn't learn from the Kavachome. Only because it's written the Veha Bege, the Vav Nehein, you're learning it. But if it wasn't learning it 
So then what? You wouldn't learn it at all from the Kabbal Chomet. So says the Gemara, right? Ve'ema, ve'habeged, that means the vav hey is coming to include shlosha, shlosha, by other clothing, only by tzemel ufishtim, meaning, again, one more time, we said that tzemel ufishtim was written in Furash and the Torah. So since wool and linen is written in Furash and the Torah, it comes to teach you only by wool and linen, right? But he says, but what about by three by three? So we learned ve'habeged. So he says, one second, maybe ve'habeged is teaching you three by three by all clothing, not only by wool and linen, so says the Gemara, no, why? The Pasuk there is talking about Beha Beged, it's written right by wool and linen. So just like there we were only talking about wool and linen, when we come to include another clothing, which is not a full clothing, it's only a material, which has three by three tfachim, which is basically 24 centimeters square, right? Every tefach is a handbreadth. So therefore what happens is, is that it's only by there that you're going to include the three by three tzvachim and you're not going to include it by anything else. Okay? So says the Gemara, ve'ema, so I'm going to say, ki amehut, when I'm going to come to exclude it, right, shalosh al shalosh, only by three by three fingers, but three by three tzvachim, maybe it is going to be mitame. Meaning, I could exclude all other clothing from the three by three fingers, but maybe by three by three tzvachim, it's all clothing is the same alachot. Right? And therefore, it's going to be the same alachot, whether it's going to be wool and linen or any other type of a silk, any other type of material that you want. So it says the, the Gemara, Tre me'ute k'tive. It's two different mi'uts, it's two different exclusions. It says beged semen o beveged pishtim. Why does it say twice a beged semen o beveged pishtim? Why does it say a clothing of semen or a clothing of pishtim? Just say beged semen o pishtim. So he says, why does it say it twice? It says, One is to come to exclude, right, by three, by three fingers, that it's not going to be mekabel tuma. One of them is going to exclude the three by three tfachim, right? And therefore the veha beged is coming to include it, but if not, it's only going to be including in the tzemel ufishtim, but not in any other type of a clothing. Okay? So since it's two exclusions, I'm excluding both three by three fingers and three by three tfachim. But then I have the vav and the hay from the ribui, that the inclusion that I'm including the three by three tfachim, but only by tzemen of ishtim. So says the Gemara, Rava de Amar Shosha Shosha Bisha Begdimi Kabinayu. Right? He says, one second. Rava said above that the three by three tfachim, right, in other clothing, is the machloka between the two tanaim. That according to Rabbi Shimon Lazar, he holds that it is mekabel tuma even by other clothing. According to the Rav Ishmael, so that it's not going to be mekabel tuma by other clothing. Okay, so says the Gemara, Kavzayna Mudalef, Menale, how do we know that according to Rav Shimon Ben Arzar, this halacha, that even by three by three, it's ba'ot bilvan, that it's not going to be by other clothing. So he learns the nafka from o beged. What does it mean o beged? When it says the word o, right, right before the word beged, it's coming to exclude and it's coming to tell you a certain halacha. The Tanya has learned in Brayta. Beged. What does it mean, beged? Enli ela beged. I would only say that it's a true beged, which is a true clothing, right? Which is going to be shosha shosha, minimum of three by three. Veshar begadim minayin. How do we know by other begadim? It's also going to be metameh. Tamalumar o beged. The word o comes to include, right, the shosha shosha tfachim, or too much sheretz, towards the shita of the bishimom and lazar. So that according to him, it is included, but you have to include it from another learning. The other learning that you learn including it from is from the word O. Okay? So we finished with this is the Kavav. Okay?